Hi there. In this lesson, you learn about placing and resizing images. You learn about image frames, multiple image frames, and more. So let's get started. Let's quickly create a letter sized document so that we get on to business. To place an image, all we need to do is go to File and then Place and locate the image from your computer and your cursor will be loaded with the image. So when you click on the screen, the image will be placed. But you'll get the shock of your life because you'll find your image something like this. Actually, let me zoom out for a better view. You'll find what looks like part of the image is somehow restricted within the pasteboard and what is extended towards the rest of the area is nothing but anchor points. Let's grab this corner and holding shift, drag it in. You'll be surprised that even when you drag the corner of the image to bring it to the right size, the image is still not showing. You know why? Because the anchor point that you dragged in is not of an image, but of a frame. Yes, it's a frame. In InDesign, an image is automatically inserted within a frame. This frame has been inserted automatically because we never created one beforehand. Now let's pick the direct selection tool and click the image and you shall find another big rectangle with red borders. This is the image we placed here. It's a large image which is why it's extended so far from the artboard. You can view the borders of the image using the selection tool as well but you'll have to click right in the center of the image where you see these two circles or the content grabber as they are called. These belong to the frame and not to the image. There are two ways you can reduce the size of the image to the size of the frame. Remember we have already reduced the size of our image thinking it to be the image. Similarly, let's drag the image from the bottom right corner anchor point and you shall find your image. Let's do a command Z on a Mac or control Z on a PC a few times until you get to the point when the image was placed. How will we know that? We will know that because we can now see that the borders are not red anymore. They are blue. Now hold shift command on a Mac or shift control on a PC and drag in the anchor point and it will drag in both the frame and the image at the same time. Command or control helps drag both the frame and the image, whereas shift locks the aspect ratio. One important thing to note here is that you'll have to hold shift command on a Mac or shift control on a PC before dragging in the anchor point. Let's do a command Z on a Mac or control Z on a PC once again. Actually, let's reduce the size of the frame here to the size of the image showing at this point. Another way to resize your image to fit it to the frame is to select the image and then right click and go to fitting and then select fit content to frame option and your image will fit itself to the frame. We'll discuss this further in a few moments. Let's delete this image. All right, now suppose we are already in the midst of a document and have one column of text here. So let's grab the text tool and make a text box on the left and right click and select fill with placeholder text to throw some text in there. I need two images on the right side here which means I already know my boundaries within which I need to add images. So rather than straight away placing my images, I'd rather place frames here first. Let's grab the rectangle frame tool and make a portrait frame on top and another landscape frame in the bottom. A frame would have a big X mark on it. That's how you differentiate it from a rectangle. Now select both the frames and go to file and then place and locate the images from the computer. You can select more than one image holding the command key on a Mac or control key on a PC and then hit open. Your cursor should now be loaded with both the images and what you see right now is clearly a portrait image. So click the portrait frame on top and it shall hold your image. Similarly, click the bottom frame and the landscape image will be inserted into it. Right click the image on top and go to fitting and you shall find a few fitting options. Let's select fill frame proportionally option and your image shall adjust itself according to this fitting. This option resizes content to fill the entire frame while preserving the content's proportions. The frame's dimensions are not changed. 
If the content and the frame have different proportions, some of the content will be cropped by the bounding box of the frame. Let's try the fit content proportionally option now. This one resizes content to fit a frame while preserving the content proportions. The frame's dimensions are not changed. If the content and the frame have different proportions, some empty space will result. That you can see happening. We'll come to content aware fit a little later, so let's move on to fit frame to content. Fit frame to content resizes a frame to fit its content. The frame's proportions are altered to match the content proportions if necessary. This is useful for resetting a graphics frame that you accidentally altered. Then we move on to fit content to frame which is mostly used. It resizes content to fit a frame and allows the content proportions to be changed. The frame will not change but the content may appear to be stretched if the content and the frame have different proportions. And then we have the center content. It centers content within a frame. The proportions of the frame and its content are preserved. The size of the content and frame is unaltered. And now let's talk about content aware fit. This one automatically fits an image inside the frame based on the image content and frame size. The frame's dimensions are not changed. To make this as the default frame fitting option, go to preferences and then general and select make content aware fit the default frame fitting option. All right, let's delete all of this and let's grab the rectangle frame tool and drag a frame, but don't release the mouse yet. Click the right arrow button twice and you will find the frame splitting itself into three equal columns. Don't release the mouse yet. Hit the up arrow twice and you'll find the frames splitting further into rows. Hit the left arrow and the numbers will reduce. Similarly, hit the down arrow and the number of frames will reduce further. So let's have nine frames and this is the easiest way to create multiple frames of equal dimensions in case you have to place multiple images to your document. Now select all your frames and go to file and then place and holding command on a Mac or control on a PC, select nine images from your repository and hit open. All your images will now be loaded onto your cursor. So click and place images into the frames and this way you can select which frames will hold particular images of yours. So basically the sequence of the images is in your hands. But suppose you just want the images to be thrown here. Sequence or the order in which they appear does not really matter. Then what you need to do is go to file and then place and locate the images using command on a Mac or control on a PC. Load nine images and select open. And when your cursor is loaded with the images, click and drag to cover the screen from margin to margin. Remember, you don't need to release the mouse yet. Now hit the right arrow key twice for three columns and then up arrow twice to have three rows. Once your rows and columns are made, release the mouse and all the images will be placed automatically into the frames. And then you can individually click and adjust the images to your liking. Let's take this image out. Now when you select an image and holding command on a Mac or control on a PC, when you keep the greater than sign pressed, the image will enlarge progressively. Similarly, when you keep the less than sign pressed, the image will reduce in size. Now you may have noticed that the image is increasing or decreasing from all corners with its center being fixed. It's because the reference point is set to the center. Let's change the reference point to top right corner and then enlarge the image holding command or control and greater than sign. And you'll find that the image is enlarging with top right corner fixed. And the same is good for other reference points as well. With the image selected, you can even flip it horizontally or vertically using these options on top. You can even flip it holding one of the middle anchor points and dragging it to the opposite side. Of course, this holds good for flipping it vertically as well. To delete an image along with the frame, use the selection tool to select the image and hit delete key or backspace key. To delete just the image and not the frame, pick the direct selection tool and click the image and hit the delete key or the backspace key and the image shall be gone, leaving the frame behind. 
To move an image along with the frame, just click and drag the image. But if you want to move the image within the frame, you'll have to click the center of the frame where there are these two tiny circles or the content grabber as they are called. Once clicked, the dimensions of the image will be revealed in the form of red or orange borders around. Now click the content grabber in the center, hold and drag the image and you shall be able to move the image within the frame. To add a stroke around the image, have the image selected and then pick a color and then add the stroke of say 5 points or any other weight of your choice and the stroke will be added all around the image. To add an image onto another frame, select the image and then go to edit and then cut or use the shortcut command X on a Mac or control X on a PC and then select the frame you want your image into and if you hit the traditional shortcut command V on a Mac or control V on a PC it will paste the image outside of the frame so please don't use the traditional paste shortcut here you've got to go to edit and then select paste into option the shortcut of which is option command and V on a Mac or alt control V on a PC and your image will be inserted into the selected frame all right guys that concludes our session today i hope you've enjoyed it and have learned something new from it so do like share and subscribe to my channel until we meet again goodbye and thanks for watching